Welcome to the third part of a three-part series on the economy of EVE Online. If you have not already played EVE Online, or have not seen the first two videos in this series, I would advise watching those first so you can get up to speed with the basics of the game and its ultra-realistic virtual economy. Shameless plug over. This is a Titan. It is the biggest, baddest capital ship in the game that a player can fly. It was designed as a flagship for Alliance fleets, as a military asset so powerful that it could turn the tide of a thousand player battle and dictate the outcome of wars. This ship is the culmination of hundreds of man hours and an unimaginable amount of virtual resources, a production schedule of nearly a year and a half. This ship has actually become pretty damn common. When Titans were first introduced to the game by CCP, the game developers, there was believed to only ever be a handful produced. Today, the economic powerhouses of coalitions like the Imperium that we have studied in a previous video churn them out at a rate of hundreds a year. There are now thousands of these ships in a game, and seeing them really is not that special anymore. So what kind of impact does building these warships have on the economies of New Eden? Now, right off the bat, I must address that most Titans in EVE are self-funded by the players that will actually fly them, rather than being built by established government military industrial complexes. But putting that aside, we can still assess what their real-life military equivalent is. Titans were introduced to EVE Online in December of 2005, and the first Titan to ever be produced was not completed until nearly a year later. At the time, the cost of a Titan was about 150 billion ISK, which is the in-game currency. To put that in perspective, it was about 5% of the GDP of Ascendant Frontier, the player alliance responsible for launching the first Titan named Steve, in honour of the late Steve Irwin, who passed away around this time. Figures from back in this day were much harder to get hard data on, and a big thank you to the team at CCP who have been assisting me with finding this more obscure information. But, from what we can determine, this was an undertaking the equivalent of the United States today, building 74 Gerald R. Ford class aircraft carriers at a price of 13 billion US dollars each. That's right. This one Titan was as big of an investment as 74 of the most powerful modern warships in the world. Today, the industrial giants of EVE Online, such as the economic powerhouse of the Imperium, the game's largest player nation, churn out these virtual behemoths on a truly industrial scale. Not only are these player-run factories able to produce far more of these once legendary spaceships, they are doing it far more efficiently, cutting the cost down to only about 50 billion isk per ship. Now, when considering the inflation that we have talked about in a video 2 of this series, this makes a Titan in 2019 1 20th the real price of an original Titan in 2006. A quick side note is that when someone says real in the context of economics, it just means accounting for inflation. So when you hear someone say real wage growth in the media, remember that it means an increase in wages after inflation is considered. Now, with that out of the way, the mega factories of EVE Online's super coalitions are truly reminiscent of the United States at the peak of World War II, building military equipment on a truly uncontestable scale. Today, given the falling real prices of Titans and the massive economic growth of these play nations, a Titan only represents about 0.0043% of the Imperium's GDP, which we worked out in the first video series to be about 1.15% quadrillion-esque, meaning that a Titan today represents the equivalent of the US military spending just under $900 million. A large amount, but nowhere near the investment of what they represented 10 years ago. This evolution in productive capacity is truly a mirror of the ever-growing world we live in today. A hundred years ago, a ship like the Titanic was an industrial marvel, a scale of which the world had never seen before. But today, there are literally thousands of ships sailing our oceans that would dwarf the Titanic if it was still afloat today. Given the hundreds of these Titans, as well as the thousands of other warships which are produced by these in-game play nations like the Imperium in any given year, this still amounts to a massive military expenditure, making them a pretty bloodthirsty nation on paper. But it must be remembered, at the end of the day, EVE Online is a video game about blowing up spaceships in epic battles that literally make headlines about their massive price tag. So, 
we can probably give them a pass on this excessive military spending. There is an in-game item though that is so monolithic in scale that not even the most powerful nations of EVE Online have considered building it. This is a space station called an Upwell Palatine Keepstar, truly the game's closest equivalent to a Death Star. The game developers introduced this item into the game as a bit of a joke, given the vast amounts of materials that would be needed to construct it. Its far less expensive alternative, a regular Keep Star, exists in the game and multiple of them are scattered throughout the galaxy acting as the capital cities of most highly developed player nations. Even these regular Keep Stars represent a construction project dwarfing even that of the aforementioned Titans. But the Upwell Palatine Keep Star takes it to a level so obscene that if it were ever properly to be produced in the game, it would represent the single most expensive video game item in the world. Now, it is important to note that this item is not so expensive because it has been made of a one-of-a-kind item, or even because it has particularly impressive stats like you see in most other video games with very valuable commodities. The Upworld Palatine Keepstar is so valuable simply due to the massive industrial undertaking it would represent. The raw materials needed to build this colossal space structure alone are mind-boggling. Even using the game's most efficient capital class mining ship, it would take close to 1 million man hours just to get the virtual resources needed for this project, before the station even starts production. If you wanted to skip this step and buy the materials needed off the player run commodities markets throughout the game, you would bleed the market supply dry almost four times over trying to gather all of the materials you needed. And remember, EVE markets are not like regular MMO markets where an NPC supplies unlimited items at a set price. If you massively raise demand for raw materials in EVE, you will massively increase the prices. Now, if by some miracle you were able to ride the market over a period of months or years, buying up the virtual space materials that you'd need without impacting the price at all, you would be looking at spending 200 trillion ISK, the equivalent of about 1.6 million US dollars. But even with this massive pile of goods acquired, you still need to actually build the thing. Industry in EVE Online is a lot like industry in the real world. You don't just throw iron ore into one end of a factory and expect a car out the other. Raw materials are turned into refined materials, which are turned into components, which are then turned into the final product. In this case, a space station. If you were to start making all of the components needed to make this space station today in a single space factory, it would not be finished until June of the year 3969 just a cool 1,950 years after you started the project. To cut this production time down to a more realistic level, you would need to employ the help of hundreds of other players that would need to manage production runs of thousands of components in parallel to see this brought together in a realistic time frame. In all, it is hard to say what the final price tag of this insane ego fortress would be. 300 trillion isk is the figure that was landed on amongst my correspondence with experienced marketeers in the game. Now, again, I have to point out that isk cannot be sold for real world money within the rules of the game, so please take this dollar figure as indicative only, but that would still comfortably make this item worth 2.4 million US dollars, by far the most expensive virtual item in existence beating out the Crystal Palace Space Station and Club Never Die from Entropia Universe quite handily. This structure was made as a joke by the game developers who more or less said it is likely never to be built in what can only really be seen as a blatant challenge to EVE Online's player base. But it must be remembered that Titans, the giant spaceships that now form Armadas, were believed by the game developers to only be limited to a few dozen units when they were first introduced. To a massive player entity like the Imperium and their rivals, building this structure may soon come in line with the level of difficulty of building a Titan all the way back in 2006, and with it, give them an excuse to build their video game spaceship equivalent of the Hoover Dam, the Manhattan Project, and the Moon Landing all rolled into one.
Thanks for watching guys, as always I hope you enjoyed the video, I have left the references in the video description as well as my email. If you have any further questions about the video, I try my very best to reply to every comment in the comment section. Otherwise, if you did enjoy, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you.